Okay, hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you all for joining our webinar today. The goal of this webinar is to introduce business angels and alternative finance models and discuss how these actors can help a startup to scale up. Business angels and alternative finance usually come into play just before venture capitalists get involved. And today, Luigi Amati, CEO of Meta Group and President of Business Angels Europe, will explain a bit more about how to attract angel investment. I'd like to briefly introduce you to the Invest Horizon initiative before we start. Invest Horizon is an EU program financed by the European Commission in association with Eureka, and our goal is to facilitate Series A funding for deep tech companies. I'd like to invite you to visit our website, investhorizon.eu, where you can find information about upcoming webinars, events, and free online courses that could be interesting for you. Today's webinar is presented by Invest Horizon in collaboration with Medigroup. It will be available on the platform for replay in a number of days. Before we start, I'd like to take a quick look um, at who is in the room today. We will have a poll arriving on your screens in a moment. Um, if you could please answer whether you're an entrepreneur currently scaling up, entrepreneur not yet scaling up, investor, accelerator, incubator, or e ecosystem builder. I'll just give you a few moments. Okay, interesting. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs in the room today. We also have accelerators, incubators, um, and ecosystem builders. Main part portion of our audience is 40% ecosystem builders and about 40% um, entrepreneurs, which is nice. Thank you for that. Um, our second poll now, I'm just going to launch, if you bear with me a moment, is are you actively seeking angel investment at present? That should be on the screen now. Okay, so we have about 50-50. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to introduce Luigi Amati, who will be our main speaker today. Um, he is a CEO and co-founder of Meta Group and president of Business Angels Europe. Luigi is also a co-founder of Italian Angels for Growth, which is one of the fastest growing business angel groups in Europe. Meta is an international investment and advisory group with a comprehensive business platform consisting of Meta Ventures, Meta Advisory, Meta Academy and the Meta Innovation Platform. Meta addresses virtually every entrepreneurship related need and is instrumental in the development of knowledge intensive ecosystems. Meta Ventures has successfully invested over 80 million euro in more than 100 startups throughout Europe and is running several early stage investment funds at present, including Aper Ventures, the Explorer Fund and Ingenium Funds. Luigi now is going to inform you about business angels and early stage investment landscapes in Europe and how you can access quality angel investment opportunities. There will then be a Q&A and you can start to submit your questions in the chat window already during present your, uh, sorry, during Luigi's presentation. I'll pass you over to Luigi now. Thank you, Catherine, and uh, thank you for uh, the invitation to Invest uh, Horizon. Uh, thank you for the introduction. It is my pleasure today to uh, talk about uh, uh, angel investing uh, and uh, uh, co-investment funds and how they can help uh, startups uh, to scale ups and to share with you uh, my experience. Uh, uh, as uh, it, it is, uh, uh, it was said by Catherine, um, uh, Meta is uh, uh, the company that I started uh, uh, about 25 years ago and uh, it's uh, combining uh, early stage investing and valorization of uh, research uh, results and innovation strategies in a platform which is uh, uh, providing uh, uh, knowledge and, and growth for uh, uh, early stage uh, uh, companies and innovation ecosystems. Uh, we've been uh, active in the advisory academy and ventures and uh, today we're going to talk mostly about our experience as Meta Ventures. Uh, which we have started already over 15 years ago. Uh, we've been going through uh, a number of uh, investments at the very early stage. And uh, as Catherine was saying, uh, also I've been, uh, uh, I had the pleasure to be part of uh, starting what it is today, the largest and most active uh, uh, angel group uh, in, uh, in Italy. So 
I, I will be able to share hopefully this experience uh, with you and uh, I would like this session of course to be as interactive as possible. I believe you can already start asking questions on the chat box uh, and uh, please uh, do not hesitate uh, to do that uh, uh, so that uh, you know we, we, we can get the most out, out of this hour. Uh, also, as a chairman of Business Angels Europe, uh, I had just a, a very quick word. Uh, it is the associations uh, made out of the largest uh, uh, angel uh, uh, federations uh, across Europe. So we are promoting the growth of uh, angel investing, uh, working with all uh, uh, European markets and not only. Also, you know, the broader, uh, the broader uh, Europe, if you like, uh, also outside the European Union and uh, we uh, count around 250 uh, structured business angel networks uh, representing uh, about 43,000 uh, business angels. So, um, scaling up in Europe, uh, I, I would like to start by giving you uh, what is uh, you know, the perspective, uh, uh, the typical perspective uh, uh, that we as European are, are looking at and uh, uh, normally, you know, we, we start by having uh, the competition between United Kingdom, France and Germany, which are, uh, you know, by far the, the largest uh, market on early stage uh, investment. And OK, as you can see, uh, France is, seems to be uh, catch, catching up and even uh, surpassing uh, the UK in, uh, in recent year. But I believe that what we see here, it's only the small, uh, uh, the small picture. Uh, I, I would like to uh, state at this point that, of course, I'm uh, uh, talking uh, mostly uh, to entrepreneurs that, as I understand, are living in Europe and uh, that probably would like to continue to live in Europe and have their headquarters uh, uh, in Europe. So I will focus on what, what is mainly, you know, the, 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 the challenges that we have to grow uh, inside Europe. Of course, there, will, there are many other ways to go, uh, you know, outside to, to other markets, but that will be the focus of my uh, presentation. So this is, you know, this is the small picture when we look at it from inside Europe. But when we start looking at, uh, you know, what we are competing with in the global market, uh, these are some of the things that, you know, can give you immediately an idea of what is happening, uh, you know, around us. So if you look at the big pictures of the US uh, versus uh, Europe, for instance, you can uh, already see immediately how much venture capital and, uh, you know, angel investing is available in the, in the US uh, versus uh, uh, Europe and uh, how these uh, four or five or six billion in Europe, which seems to be a lot when you start comparing or competing among uh, uh, France, Germany and the UK are really a small thing uh, when uh, you look at uh, the perspective of the US, which is probably five or six times bigger than us. And what this, uh, you know, then is uh, reflected into is probably well captured in these pictures, which is so showing you who are the global, you know, fast growing innovative companies. So hopefully, you know, the companies that some of you will be leading in maybe 10 or 20 years. And when you look at uh, uh, these pictures, uh, you know, you, you can see that uh, the big picture is that Europe should uh, maybe compare itself more with, uh, uh, you know, Africa, if you like, and uh, not so much with the US and China for, uh, you know, the, 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 the size of the market in which we're in now. So uh, really looking at uh, uh, each and every country inside Europe is probably uh, not the best uh, solution if you as an entrepreneur are intending to scale up uh, your company uh, inside, uh, inside Europe. What is, what is the main problem? What is the main problem that we have? The main problem is uh, uh, fragmentation. First of all, you know, we are uh, Europe, uh, uh, European Union, but uh, we don't have uh, countries like Switzerland, Israel and the UK, maybe in the future, which are not part. So already we have a challenge uh, that, uh, you know, we are a relatively uh, a small market, but even this kind of market is not a real single market yet. They, they have 28 different regulators, uh, 28 different tax schemes, 24 official working language, labor laws and so on and so forth. Everything is broken down into 28. 28. So this makes, uh, you know, for uh, uh, the, uh, the ecosystem to be disconnected, so investors uh, do not uh, uh, talk or uh, cross invest or co-invest uh, so much uh, with, with each other. They are mostly focused on their own country. You hear about France uh, willing to be 
the largest uh, uh, market for uh, you know early stage uh, the tech nation and then you hear the same from uh, germany and probably you will hear the same for bulgaria and so on and so forth but nobody talks about europe as uh, uh, you know a tech uh, a tech nation and uh, the consequence of that is uh, you know as a global entrepreneur as soon as i have some traction in my country i am going uh, to look into the us or china they are much bigger market they're much more homogeneous and uh, they provide me with uh, better opportunities. So, um, you know, is this uh, uh, what I want to do? Then no problem. There are many, many programs. Uh, uh, I'm coming originally from Italy. I think there are about 10 programs for startups that wants to go uh, across the pond in, in, you know, in the US uh, to Silicon Valley, to Boston and to other places. And of course, that can be a choice. But as I said, I will focus, you know, more on those companies that want to grow and scale up, uh, uh, you know, inside Europe and probably, you know, to do the same in parallel, maybe into the US in China, but still, uh, you know, retain their main operations uh, and uh, uh, headquarters, research and development and so on and so forth uh, inside Europe. So how can we address fragmentation? Well, you know, uh, there are things that uh, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to, to tackle for an entrepreneur, but I think it's important that you understand that, uh, you know, there is a big effort and there are big progresses in lowering uh, the internal barriers, which are fiscal, uh, legal, uh, uh, you know, language barriers and, and culture, and that, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a, a strong movement uh, towards uh, having, a, a, you know, a safe harbor for entrepreneurs inside the EU. Uh, you know that uh, there are many de different definitions in different countries about the innovative companies, but that these definitions are becoming more and more similar. And there is a, a mounting pressure, uh, you know, on policymakers to make sure that uh, the market becomes uh, more and more homogeneous. So that's, you know, from uh, the point of view of the legislators. But at the same time, I believe that uh, we can do a lot between uh, investors and uh, entrepreneurs to uh, connect ourselves uh, in any case, notwithstanding some difficulties, by increasing our activities, you know, of networking, uh, building uh, larger angel groups, connecting the angel groups, building, uh, you know, uh, truly uh, pan-European co-investment funds and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, uh, a solution to this uh, problem of uh, fragmentation is actually what I would call uh, uh, network investing. And network investing uh, has uh, uh, two components. The first is uh, network across different uh, investors from different countries. And also the second is networking among different types of investors. And I'm going to focus mostly between uh, uh, in the connection between business angels and, and co-investment funds, but also we'll touch uh, uh, quickly upon uh, the connection between angel investing and, and crowdfunding. Um, I believe you're most, most of you are familiar with business angels, so I won't spend too much time on that. But of course, business angels are either individual angels, uh, those people that really like to do by themselves. They can have small pockets or big pockets, it doesn't matter, but they really like to pick and choose their own companies and to uh, work alongside the entrepreneur putting uh, money and time, which is the main characteristic of an angel investors. They can be organized in networks, which are basically uh, uh, associations where you have uh, presentations and angels attending. The characteristic of the networks is that the angels normally do not know each other very well. Uh, it's, uh, it's more like a gathering of uh, uh, people that happens because of, uh, uh, because of, the, uh, because of the network. And uh, even in this case, you normally will have uh, angel uh, investors uh, investing individually or you know, maximum two or three people and probably not always the same two or three people. Uh, then you have uh, the so-called syndicates. These are like, uh, you know, uh, a close group of uh, uh, angels which decide to invest together, even to pull some money together, and that are willing to uh, create, you know, a, a portfolio together of uh, uh, invested company. Normally, it's uh, either, you know, geographic proximity that brings them together, or it is uh, uh, the, the knowledge and the experience uh, in, a, in a specific sectors. And finally, you have uh, angel groups, which are instead a uh, uh, large uh, uh, group of angels who have been uh, co-opting each other, if you like, into the group. So they know each other quite well. And normally, uh, these uh, groups will be investing uh, 
uh, in uh, forming you know syndicates which are uh, uh, formed you know each new company uh, invested uh, will uh, will have a new a new syndicates uh, in terms of co-investment funds, you also have different way of uh, uh, co-investing uh, with, uh, you know, very early stage uh, um, angel investing type of deals. So you have uh, a very large part, which is often undervalued, but is grants. There are a lot of grants around uh, Europe, both at regional, national and European level. Uh, there are matching funds or also uh, called, uh, if you like, stupid funds in the sense that whenever private investors are in, uh, the, the matching fund will also be in. Uh, there, there are co-investment funds which are managed uh, by uh, public uh, uh, innovation agencies which have a, a main uh, uh, focus on impact and uh, economic development. And there are co-investing uh, co funds which are managed by uh, private fund managers, which instead have uh, more an angle also of uh, economic and, uh, and financial return. So there is uh, uh, quite a variety of, uh, of players uh, around. And uh, how do we approach uh, those, uh, uh, those players? Well, for approaching business angels, I would say it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, each one of you can start by looking at what is the national federation or trade association of business angels in uh, her or his own uh, uh, country. Uh, there are, uh, I would say, uh, this kind of association in most European countries, not in all of them, but even where there are no uh, national federation that can then can introduce uh, you to the relevant uh, uh, angel group or angel syndicate, uh, uh, you still can look for uh, uh, groups uh, of or networks of, uh, of business angels that should also be, uh, let's say, easily accessible uh, to you. Or, you know, if the worst comes to the worst, you can always ask Business Angels Europe uh, and uh, we could provide you with, uh, you know, the most relevant uh, angel investing uh, uh, group in your region or, or your country. Uh, the other way to have, uh, let's say, more direct approach uh, with angels is that uh, um, most uh, national associations and federations, they organize annual general meetings in which there is a gathering of angel investors and that uh, normally uh, also entails the, the possibility for some entrepreneurs at least to be pitching at these events uh, and it's a good opportunity to share and networking and get started uh, with the world of uh, angel investing. When it comes to co-investment funds, I think this is uh, slightly more difficult because they are less uh, visible. They are often associated either with innovation agencies or with angel groups, and sometimes they can also be associated with the venture capital associations when they are uh, privately uh, managed. Uh, probably a, a also a good door to knock on is the so-called national promotional banks like the British Business Bank in the UK or uh, La Banque Populaire de l'Innovation in, uh, in France or uh, um, similar uh, type of uh, uh, national uh, innovation banks uh, in different countries as they are um, among the, the main, uh, let's say, investors into this type of, uh, of co-investment funds. So with a little bit of uh, curiosity and a little bit of uh, time, you should be able to uh, to approach them. And I think it's also good that, you know, if you are an entrepreneur, you start passing a few hurdles. Uh, the first being, uh, you know, who, who do I approach and, uh, and how do I approach them? I think what is important to notice here is that not all money is the same. So you will have to be quite uh, uh, careful in this very first phase because this is where you can, you know, waste a lot of time finding the right investors and most angel groups and syndicates and so on and so forth, they have written out and spelled out quite well what is their investment strategy and investment target. So do spend time doing your research before starting, you know, contacting uh, and, uh, and spamming emails, uh, you know, to the left and, and, and to the right. Um, uh, just an indication of what could be, you know, some good addresses. This is the, so to say, infrastructure we've been building uh, with uh, Business Angels Europe. It's called the Business Angels Europe Club. It is a club of about 15 angel groups across Europe uh, among uh, the so-called, let's say, most uh, mature network and those network with, uh, let's say, uh, an international exposure. And the advantages of these networks is that not only they invest in their own country, but they're also well, well connected internationally. So once you get an investment from these angel groups, the chances are that they can help you grow your company also 
across other countries. Let me just uh, point out uh, uh, FAM Business Angels uh, as being uh, uh, you know, the first and today the largest uh, uh, angel group entirely composed by women. There are over 150 uh, angel women there. There are uh, more and more examples of uh, uh, angel uh, uh, women investors. This is really you know, a growing uh, uh, segment uh, uh, of, uh, of the market. Uh, another example could be uh, Angels for Women, uh, an, an angel network recently started in Milan that uh, again was co-founded by uh, seven uh, uh, angels and uh, you know, only after a few months it's counting close to uh, 50 of them. So, um, uh, good addresses, uh, good possibilities to approach them and also through them a good possibility to grow international. And just let me also point out that, for instance, one of our members is Ange Quebec, which is, of course, a, a Canadian, a very large Canadian angel uh, uh, club that could provide uh, also, you know, the links to, to, uh, to the other side of the Atlantic once you want to grow with them. Um, a very quick snapshot, but just to give you an idea, each angel group is investing on average seven, eight million per year. So there is some serious money in each and every angel group. And when they are investing together, they can really make uh, you know, the difference. Um, quickly about business angels and crowdfunding. I think that uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm quite positive about crowdfunding. I think that they are a good leverage, uh, the crowdfunding platform for uh, angel investors and vice versa. I think that a lot of crowdfunding platforms are now connecting more and more with angel investors and using angel investors, if you like, as an uh, uh, anchor investor to then present the opportunity on their crowdfunding platform. Uh, the crowdfunding platform are especially good, I think, for uh, B2C type of uh, uh, models in which uh, you have a consumer product and in which the crowd can really give a real indication whether you know this is something uh, the crowd would like uh, or not. I'm a bit more skeptical on uh, uh, B2B type of uh, B2B type of products, but definitely I think possible collaboration. I will go quickly because uh, the time is running out. Uh, so I already mentioned B Angel uh, uh, is, uh, is the network of the balloon region. Just to give you an idea, 290 members, over 30 million invested. So, you know, some real money uh, going into each and every company. This is just to say that Angel Group is not about uh, uh, 10,000 euro or 15,000 euro. It can be also like that, but it can also be about half a million or a million euro just uh, of investing per group. That's the group I co-founded, YAG. This is the growth we had. Uh, as you've seen from you know, 2007, we started in uh, uh, nine people. 2008, we were already 35. And since then, you can see that the growth, uh, it's over now 200 members. Also, again, with uh, uh, quite uh, a substantial amount of uh, investments and not only in Italy. That's the other thing I would like to stress, that angel groups are becoming more and more international. So as you can see, we have companies in the UK, in Portugal, in Israel, and, and also now growing into the USA. Co-investment funds, uh, as I said, there is a lot. Uh, first of all, think that only the Horizon uh, Europe program uh, provides uh, 10 to 14 billion per year of uh, uh, matching grants uh, uh, that could go very well alongside uh, uh, private money uh, put in by uh, business angels. This is more money than the whole money invested by the venture capital industry combined. So people tend to overlook grants, but they are quite a powerful co-investment uh, mechanism. Uh, there is uh, quite a lot of uh, different co-investment funds. I, I'm mentioning here a few. Uh, Italy and Poland, these are two that Meta is uh, directly involved in, uh, but you have the Angel Co-Investment Fund in the UK, Angel Source, uh, High Tech Grunder Funds. Uh, you have the Scottish Co-Investment Fund active for over 25 years. So there is pl plenty of co-investment funds which have the main characteristic with respect to a classical VC fund to be angels friendly. So they will not try you know, to excessively dilute uh, uh, an angel group and they will not try to, to, to squeeze out, so to say, uh, angel uh, uh, investors uh, and they will be also you know, uh, quite, uh, uh, I would say, friendly to the entrepreneur. Uh, so um, we have uh, uh, the other. The other. Uh, let, let me, you know, give you maybe just to uh, have a, a conclusion probably with this session, so that uh, you can have some uh, uh, questions uh, uh, to be asked. I would like also to uh, take you through some of the examples, uh, so that you can uh, understand a little bit better, you know, how this can work uh, and. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of those entrepreneurs that probably are a few years uh, uh, ahead of you. 
Um, so uh, the, the first uh, example that I would like to give you is uh, uh, Greenbone. Uh, Greenbone is uh, an innovative uh, uh, startup that was uh, uh, founded not so long ago, only in 2014. Uh, and uh, it's located in uh, Emilia Romagna, exactly in, uh, in Faenza, led by a world-class team that I have to say has been there already uh, a few times in, in creating this type of uh, uh, amazing technologies. In these cases, basically what they do, they, they've developed uh, an, an innovative, let's say, wood derived, uh, especially from bamboo, uh, a bone regenerative implant for, uh, you know, extensive bone uh, uh, damage uh, uh, in uh, uh, parts of the of the skeleton, which are uh, uh, you know non loaded, uh, uh, you know uh, part of the part of the skeletal, and it's uh, um, now implanted into humans already with some uh, uh, very interesting results, and it's expected to provide the, you know the patients with the new completely functional bone. Um, which will also uh, uh, enormously reduce the uh, cost for uh, uh, for the hospitals uh, uh, because the the, the 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 healing will be so to say permanent and there will be not the need for uh, you know multiple uh, uh, surgeries uh, for this kind of uh, for this kind of uh, uh, fractures so i think that uh, 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 just to give you some ideas about the numbers uh, you know the in 2015 greenborn received uh, uh, the first round and uh, we uh, gathered uh, uh, about uh, 2 million uh, euros and this was from a co-investment fund, the, the fund called Ingenium that I, that I showed you before, together with uh, uh, 11 angels uh, from uh, Italian Angels for Growth and also with uh, uh, one uh, international uh, um, uh, angel investors uh, uh, that was already in from the, from the beginning. Um, three years later, or two and a half years later, um, uh, the pre-money valuation of Greenbone was already up uh, uh, four or five times. So uh, the moment when we uh, found, uh, you know, quite a large uh, uh, venture capital fund as an investor, we were still able, first of all, to find uh, a pan-European uh, uh, fund to invest. And uh, secondly, uh, although the second round of investment was close to 10 million euros, the pre-money valuation of Greenborn was high enough not to uh, allow for too much dilution uh, of the entrepreneur, uh, the angel investors, and the co-investment funds. And uh, today, Greenborn uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, advanced in his uh, uh, experimentation phase. And uh, uh, we now know that only with another potential dilution of not more than 10, 15 percent, probably the company will be able to go even uh, uh, directly uh, to the market. Um, another example of uh, a company that has been funded only by, let's say, angels and co-investment fund is uh, Spreaker. Uh, Spreaker started as, uh, uh, let's say, a, a mobile uh, uh, web uh, podcasting, uh, bringing you know together the creators of audios and their fans. Uh, initially um, in Italy, then expanded in Germany, and received again you know different rounds of funding from uh, uh, angel investors and, and co-investment funds. And again, it was able to scale up uh, only thanks to that uh, across Europe. And nowadays, uh, uh, it has been also expanding towards the US. Uh, with emerging uh, with another uh, quite large player of uh, uh, podcasting in, in the US in a, in a single company that is uh, called BoxNest. And what is also interesting and uh, you know what is particularly pleasing for us is that the CEO, uh, the original CEO Spreaker is uh, now still the CEO even of the merge, uh, merged uh, uh, company. So this is really a worldwide leader and I think if you are interested in podcasting, which is really a booming industry, you can just download the app uh, Spreaker and, and see for yourself uh, what, I, uh, what I mean. So another company that actually was able to, to make it and to scale up uh, only thanks to angel investing and, and co-investment funds. Uh, one more uh, examples I want to share with you, it's uh, also uh, from, a, from a different uh, region of Europe. Uh, this is uh, uh, exactly coming from Bielorussia in terms of uh, initial technology. Uh, as you know, in uh, you know the batteries and energy saving uh, 
uh, today is, uh, if you like, the problem. Uh, there is a problem, you know, with rechargeable batteries uh, that are using current technologies, and only, and even if you, you know, double the efficiency of the current, let's say, uh, batteries, you would only have an improvement of uh, three or five percent uh, of, uh, you know, the, the, the battery life. Um, we we found uh, a, an interesting uh, uh, solution on uh, thin film uh, batteries. And we again, uh, you know, started the companies with some local investments that then received a second round of funding of, uh, of three million. And again, today we've been able to have this company, uh, you know, firmly located uh, in, uh, in Europe uh, with uh, uh, offices both in Belarus and, and in Poland. And, uh, you know, now looking for uh, uh, 40 million euro funding uh, in order to build the first uh, industrial uh, um, installation. So again, uh, I would say, you know, a, a successful scale-ups uh, uh, with uh, angels, angel groups, uh, co-investment funds, uh, and uh, the possibility of keeping the company inside Europe. I would like to conclude, uh, you know, my, my presentation, and then, uh, you know, we'll be uh, listening to your uh, uh, question and answers with the last example of uh, one of our last investments uh, called Talent Alpha, uh, which uh, uh, is a company uh, uh, of, uh, uh, let's say, talent, uh, IT talent uh, recruitment addressing uh, a market which is 1,000 uh, uh, billion US dollars in, uh, in IT services uh, um, and, uh, you know, having uh, uh, already developed uh, a substantial market uh, in uh, Poland. Again, these are the three founders and, uh, again, they raised initially $200,000 with, uh, you know, with three uh, business angels from convertible notes. And they've gone a long way since then, but even a relatively fast way. Uh, and together with Upper Ventures, uh, which is another fund uh, managed by Meta, we've been able, together with some business angels, to raise 4.7 million US dollars, which are now uh, uh, allowing us uh, already uh, to scale up uh, to the size of a company which, if successful, will again uh, uh, be able to stay, uh, you know, where it was created uh, and to contribute to, uh, you know, European, uh, if you like, wealth and, uh, and growth. So, all in all, uh, you know, what would I like to pass you on uh, is that, uh, you know, business angels are a, an incredible engine uh, for, uh, you know, investing and supporting uh, uh, startups and increasingly getting used to help them to become scale-ups. And that you borders, although are there, I cannot deny that are still, uh, you know, a little bit of a pain. Uh, but uh, I can see also, you know, as the new generation comes in, uh, they are becoming less and less uh, uh, restricted by by the borders. Uh, co-investment funds are, are following them up. And again, by co-investment funds, uh, as I say, it's a, it's a broad concept going from grants to uh, uh, you know, to, to co-investment uh, uh, funds, uh, which are, let's say, uh, angels and, uh, and entrepreneur-friendly, avoiding too much dilution at too much of an early stage uh, for both the entrepreneurs and, and the angel investors. And, uh, you know, scale-up entrepreneurs are uh, behaving uh, and, uh, and finding themselves uh, uh, more and more into one big uh, uh, internal uh, European market. Um, the final note of uh, hope, obviously optimism, uh, despite you know all the stereotypes of uh, Europe being an old continent, uh, we are rising in innovation. All these efforts that we are putting in creating a, a single market are paying off. Uh, this is uh, a, a report uh, published on Medium by uh, Christian Knott that says that you know the first three quarters of 2019 saw 69 tech uh, uh, initial public offers in Europe versus only 28 uh, in the US. So a positive signs, which I hope uh, will only, uh, you know, improve uh, uh, with time. Thank you for uh, listening. And now I will uh, uh, be ready to answer your uh, questions. Yeah. 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 Okay. Having some technical problems, uh, Catherine, could you repeat the question? Okay. 
Um, okay, so just repeating the question. Given your experience in getting a, or, sorry, wrong question, my bad. Um, is there a European dedicated fund, Business Angels Club, or other co investment initiative for young tech entrepreneurs? Well, I don't think uh, I, there is uh, one for young tech entrepreneurs. I think there are many. Probably uh, we should understand better what does it mean, young tech. It's a very broad definition. <laughs> okay. And then, given your experience in getting approached by companies looking for investment, what would you say is the biggest mistake that companies make? The biggest mistake companies make in approaching the investors. I think they don't prepare in terms of uh, understanding what is the investment strategy. They think that it's money. And so they just look for money. And so, as so I said before, they start shooting uh, 100 uh, different investors and they lose focus. And when they start uh, you know, presenting, they really don't know exactly who they have in front. All money is not the same. Uh, each investor and each angel groups and each co-investment fund has its own specific investment strategy. So I think this is the biggest mistake. You know, you need to prepare. Okay, and how would someone who wants to be part of a business angel network go about getting involved? Um, I believe that uh, probably the most uh, simple is to get in touch with, uh, as I said, either the National Association of Business Angels or to look in your city or in your region if there is an angel group, an angel group. I, I would suggest to, to join uh, just for you know one year. Uh, and, uh, and start practicing. You don't necessarily have to invest uh, all of a sudden. Um, there are a number of European initiatives which are also uh, dealing with uh, angel investing, and I think that uh, it's uh, you know you can find quite a lot of them. Like uh, uh, I can mention the European Early Stage Investing uh, Launchpad or European Asyl.eu, in which you have a lot of material about. Uh, uh, how to become an angel investor, what it is like, uh, uh, how to join angel investors. So my, my, my recommendation would be join an angel group on a practical base, uh, go to one or two events and then decide if you want to become a member. You will certainly have a learning experience there, training and so on and so forth. And at the same time, uh, look at uh, uh, you know all the resources that are today available uh, on the web uh, uh, related to uh, how to become an angel investors uh, and uh, uh, and where to find, uh, you know, angel groups. Okay, um, we have a question from the European Platform for Sports Innovation. They'd like to know what economic sectors are the Business Angels Network interested in? Um, yes, okay. The, what economic sectors? Let's say the big picture is that out of 100% uh, percent of uh, angel investing, you will always see more or less that uh, 80 percent is represented uh, by investments either in uh, let's say life science or uh, health and uh, uh, 50 and another maybe uh, part it's uh, IT and uh, everything that is uh, around the IT so IT changes name every year so it's difficult for the uh, for those that are not following uh, constantly uh, you know, to, to understand all the names today, it's, uh, you know, everybody talks about deep tech, artificial intelligence, uh, maybe five years ago it was mobile, 10 years ago it was internet, but basically we're talking about software. Uh, the reason for these two sectors to be the most popular is that uh, uh, in both cases you can have uh, uh, quite a uh, uh, high increase of value of the companies you are investing in in a short period of time, and by short I mean let's say three to seven years. The big difference between the two sectors is, of course, the amount of investment required to kickstart, uh, whereas uh, you need to, to have uh, some uh, uh, serious uh, money also maybe from uh, uh, research projects or a grant for uh, any project uh, that is uh, related to healthcare. Uh, everything that is related to software and uh, so what is called now tech or IT in general, obviously uh, initially requires a, a smaller amount of money, although you shouldn't be uh, fooled because you know through the 
through the years if you want to have uh, to build a successful b2c uh, company uh, in the it space uh, uh, there will be the need for uh, a lot of money but these are the two uh, let's say main sectors there are some uh, new sectors which are emerging uh, specifically for instance in the in the area of uh, agro food uh, there is a there is a lot of development a lot of interest and uh, uh, you know everything that is tech it's uh, it's uh, it's also growing quite fast also financial services are now more or less disrupted by uh, software uh, technology so very uh, another very interesting area to look at um so we have a question about initiatives that could encourage investors to invest in a smaller country like for example slovenia uh, yes Again, I can mention from direct experience uh, the um, uh, the ASIL program, uh, so this uh, early stage investment launchpad, uh, which is actually, if you like, a, a sister program of Invest Horizon. Uh, it is actually looking at these uh, uh, smaller markets. We have very active local leaders uh, in uh, Slovenia. Uh, we have uh, uh, extremely, we have the, the Slovenian uh, uh, angel networks there. Uh, there is uh, another group uh, under ASIL which is uh, forming uh, uh, in Slovenia. We have uh, angel networks uh, very active uh, in countries like Armenia or Georgia. Uh, we are discovering more and more a very active ecosystem in, uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, tech angels uh, in, uh, in Bucharest, uh, uh, CEO Angels Club in Sofia. So as I said, you know, if, uh, if people are willing to uh, make the effort to uh, really uh, scout for uh, the, the good angel groups and start approaching them, uh, this is something that is uh, uh, growing very fast and uh, it's really possible uh, nowadays to, uh, to find angel investors uh, across Europe. I would, I would recommend uh, always to have a double check with an association like Business Angels Europe as, uh, you know, uh, of course there might be a lot of self, uh, self-proclaimed uh, uh, angel investors which probably are, are not, but generally speaking I think it's a, it's a growing market uh, with plenty of opportunities. Okay. And what would you say puts you off investing into someone other than obvious factors like there is no market for the product? So the no-go for investing. Um, no-go for investing, uh, I believe that are, um, again, those people that come uh, unprepared, I believe that for me it's uh, the more, uh, you know, I'm into this, the more I can easily spot, uh, you know, who are the people that really did their uh, due diligence on me, which I really appreciate a lot because it means that, you know, there is already uh, quite a, a strong, uh, a strong uh, uh, match. And uh, other than that, uh, uh, I believe that uh, although, of course, uh, having a good uh, uh, product market fit is a, is a fundamental issue and showing that you really know the market and that you really know the product is uh, probably you know one of the top uh, uh, three things but i would put at the at the very top uh, the fact that uh, uh, i need to really understand uh, what is uh, the uh, the mix of the uh, people that are uh, part of this uh, entrepreneurial venture uh, if there is enough experience if there is enough resilience if there is enough uh, cohesion uh, I, I believe that uh, this is uh, still of course uh, the, the 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 element that you know will uh, will make it or break it uh, uh, growing a, a high growth uh, company uh, you know will require uh, years of dedication and of uh, common uh, uh, you know common work and common understanding so uh, being uh, technically super skilled or super capable um, it will not be enough so i think that that will still be always at the top of uh, 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 no go if uh, there is not enough uh, evidence of uh, a good team okay so next question um says how can someone with business development skills help an angel investor Um, I believe that an angel investor should be uh, having business development skills. <laughs> Someone with business development skills would be probably a consultant to the entrepreneur. OK, 
Okay, and can you explain a little bit better about matching and how that works? Um, I believe that for matching, uh, this is uh, intended uh, the, 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 the way of uh, semi-automatic, if you like, uh, uh, investing alongside with angel groups. There are uh, a number of schemes in a number of countries where you can apply as an angel investor, as an individual angel or as a syndicate. And uh, uh, if you are qualified to be a real angel investors and uh, you know to be putting some real money into, into the company, then there are some automatic schemes from uh, national innovation agencies that will provide you with matching fund, uh, which are normally very generous because they also don't expect the same amount of return that would be granted to the private investor. So there will be also asymmetric returns. I can mention, you know, schemes like techno starters or in the Netherlands or similar uh, schemes in, in Portugal. Uh, there are quite a few around uh, uh, Europe. Okay, and the last question for now is about work with regional and structural funds. Do you do a lot of work with structural funds? Well, I would say that the structural funds are by far the main source of uh, early stage co-investment funds. Uh, and therefore, I mean, we do work a lot as Meta with the uh, uh, structural funds uh, uh, to build what they, they call equity uh, financial instruments. Um, they are uh, a, a source uh, that is becoming more and more, if you like, uh, uh, available, uh, the regions in general and uh, the public administration in general is, uh, uh, although still uh, quite uh, slowly moving away from the culture of grants and it's uh, entering, uh, if you like, uh, the culture of uh, uh, revolving instruments uh, such as the financial instruments uh, uh, which can be uh, convertible loans or uh, uh, equity or quasi-equity co-investment funds. So there is a lot, but probably there will be a lot more uh, to come uh, in, the, in the coming years. I would say you have to stay tuned to uh, financial instruments uh, and structural funds and also to another initiative which is called Invest EU, in which quite a lot of funding will be provided for uh, developing, uh, uh, let's say, early stage friendly uh, type of uh, uh, funds. Maybe I could mention uh, also a new initiative from the European Commission that is called the European Innovation Council. Uh, these are not structural funds, so they're not funds for regional development, but these are the so-called centrally managed funds, so directly managed uh, from uh, uh, the European Commission here in Brussels. Uh, and these are uh, fully dedicated uh, for uh, investing uh, both with grants and equity inside uh, disruptive uh, innovations. Uh, again, I think that uh, there is a similar uh, trend and a similar pattern to the one I, I tried to describe, uh, which is to provide enough finance to European champions to be able to scale up uh, thanks to angel groups, angel investors, co-investment funds uh, and, uh, and, 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 and grants. So there is already the European Innovation Council pilot and I really invite all the companies uh, you know, that are listening that think that uh, they already have uh, a product uh, uh, ready you know, uh, to, to scale up uh, to look into the European Innovation Council and to look into the uh, open uh, uh, call for tenders that are uh, that are there. The novelty there is that there will be not only grants up to 2 million euro, which of course is already a substantial amount of money, but some of the companies could even apply for equity and in principle equity will be up to 15 million euro per company. Okay, perfect. So thank you guys for joining us today. Um, a reminder that this webinar will be available on the Invest um, Horizon website for replay in a couple of days. And please don't forget to fill out the feedback survey that will pop up on your screen now. Um, the next Invest Horizon webinar will be on unlocking corporate venturing, and it will be on December 5th at 4 p.m. and it's coordinated by IESE. If you want any more information about that, again, please check out Invest Horizon's website at www.investhorizon.eu and you can find us at Metagroup at www.metagroup.com.
Invest Horizon also has an accelerator program. The next call will be published at the end of November 2019, and it will be an ongoing call with cutoff dates every six months. Thanks again for joining, guys, and we'll see you the next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.